another application for the um, regarding the pulmonary oncology is how to treat the lung lesions. The first uh, talk was about how to get uh, histopathology and now how to treat it. And just the, the role of intervention is increasing regarding the management of pulmonary lesions, particularly lung metastasis. And the, um, the technique depends on how to optimize the tumor ablation regarding the, the, the competence of the operator as well as the use of the technology in to order to provide a proper biology response from the tumor. The main strategy is to make a site reduction of the tumor and to downstage the tumor. Different ablation techniques, you are uh, aware about it from the um, hepatic uh, ablation, like the microwave, cryotherapy, laser, uh, irreversible electroporation, and the RF. And the most advantages for the ablation therapy, as you know, is the selective damage of the tumor with minimal treatment, morbidity, and mortality in comparison to um, surgery and sparing the healthy lung tissues, particularly for patients with emphysema or fibrosis, and excellent imaging while we do the ablation under CT guidance, and we can repeat this technique if there is um, recurrence, and we can treat multiple lesions at the same session. So the objection of the ablation therapy, as you can see in this uh, demonstration, is to eradicate all viable tissues in a certain volume of the tumor with a safety margin surrounding the tumor to ensure complete eradication and minimize the damage to this uh, volume in order to um, save the, uh, the rest of the lung. So what are our patient selection criteria? We have either curative, new adjuvant, symptomatic and palliative intentions. And the curative intention is to achieve achievement of long-term survival associated with effective local tumor control. The new adjuvant is to convert inoperable cases into operable cases. And the symptomatic cases, in order to minimize the tumor association pain and hence the better life quality, and palliative treatment is to control symptoms and in cases of inoperability or patient post-surgical recurrence or failed systemic chemotherapy. What are the inclusion criteria for ablation, inoperable or irresectable primary or metastatic lung diseases, or when the patient refused surgery? Non-candidate patients uh, due to um, limited cardiopulmonary reserve and also for um, patients with um, adequate bleeding profile. The most important criteria are the size and the number of the lesions. The size, not more than five centimeters and not more than five in number. The exclusion criteria are progressive tumor disease or uncontrolled primary, lesions more than five in number or more than five in centimeters, and also uncontrolled uh, bleeding profile of the patients. What are the positive factors to ensure adequate and complete ablation of the lesions? Lesion size between two or three centimeters and location in the outer third of the lung parenchyma to minimize the heat sink effect and this will increase the, um, the effectiveness of the ablation procedure. Negative factors, the size is the most important factor. More, lesions more than three centimeters in diameter or adjacent to large blood vessels or less than one centimeter from important structures like the aorta, trachea, or bronchus, or heart, or, uh, or in, in contact to the apex or the lung base. The radio frequency, as you, can know, as you know from the basic uh, principles, it's to convert the electrical currents into heat through the impedance or through the tissues. And what we lose um, from the electric energy is converted into heat, and this heat will induce coag coagulative necrosis of the tissues. Different radio frequency needles are available in the market. You can use either monopolar or bipolar system, multi um, um, uh, needles, or even internally cooled in order to increase the size of ablation zone. The technique for ablation is done under CT guidance. Of course, like the same principle in CT-guided uh, lung biopsy, we do a surface marker uh, on, the, um, on the lesion to get the shortest and the safest access to the lesion. Afterwards, you will insert the, uh, the probe or the antenna inside the lesion, and afterwards, we will give the amount of energy com proportional to the size of the lesion. And afterwards, we get a safety margin to ensure that the complete ablation of the lesion. So 
These are some cases that we perform in our institute. This is a lesion in pre-RF, metastatic disease from a colon, and this is during RF. And after one month post-ablation, you can see that the zone of ablation is large. There is a central cavity, so there is no problem in that. Just follow up. Uh, give the patients, of course, an uh, antibiotic to guard against infection. But afterwards, this um, cavity will um, retract and they will get a large zone of um, um, fibrous tissue. It's important if, there's, if the diagnostic uh, radiologist is not aware of that, that we do a large zone of ablation, maybe he, after, he writes in his report, tumor progress. This is a, a pseudo progress. We do large zone of ablation to ensure coverage of the lesion. So please make sure that there is no enhancement and in PET CT there is no activity because you may, the, the radiologist who do not aware, is not aware about the, uh, the, that we do induce large zone of ablation, he may interpret this as tumor progress. So this is another case in which the ablation zone was done for a metastatic colorectal cancer, and there is no residual, only um, linear retractions. Another case of a large metastatic lesion from a breast cancer, and after ablation you can see that there is no um, contrast enhancement at the lesion denoting complete ablation, nine months post ablation. And what is the main value for ablation therapy is that we can apply it for multiple lesions. This is a 62-year-old female patient with sigmoid cancer and had three metastases. And we did the ablation therapy for all the three metastases. And you can see the, uh, the, the, the presence of, the, um, of the, um, the needle inside all three lesions and post-ablation, 24 hours. And the patient was tumor-free for two years. And as you can see in this animation. This is the added value of this technique that we may apply it for multiple lesions for, and to induce um, complete tumor control and tumor-free patients. This is another um, case. This is a pre-F, RF. This lesion is located at the, um, at the pleural surface. We had a large zone of ablation and 18-month post-ablation, we get a fibrotic tissue. And the added value for the ablation is that we can apply it for both primary and metastatic disease, and the histopathology does not play a role in the management of the patients. So the other technique is the microwave, and the microwave has advantages over the CT that the amount of heat that we apply is higher, and we make a shorter uh, zone of ablation because it, it depends on the agitations of water molecules, and the friction of the water molecules will induce heat, and this heat is will be used for the treatment uh, to induce coagulative necrosis. So what are the advantages of microwave over CT? We don't, does not depend on the electrical current and uh, the, the flow is not uh, uh, harbored by the air bubbles or the uh, uh, carbonization of the tissues and we need also a shorter ablation time. And this is a paper that we published in radiology in 2011 that we had a good results around 72, 73% with, with complete ablation for 95 lesions from 130. And the, the, the most important significant factor is the size of the lesion. Lesions less than three centimeters are adequately controlled in comparison to lesions more than three centimeters. And also peripheral lesions are well controlled in comparison to the other lesions. Histopathology does not play a role in the management and control of the patients and the incidence of complication were less than 10% regarding pneumothorax and hemorrhage. Another paper was published by Hiraki et al. that they showed also the tumor type does not signify the tumor response. As you can see also in this metastatic deposit from a colorectal cancer, which is treated by microwave ablation and was completely resolved. And we can, you can see here the follow-up of this show that you can see that post-ablation, the, um, the fibrotic zone will also diminish in size over days um, due to retraction and fibrosis. Here, a metastatic colorectal cancer, plural based on the base of the right lung, and post-microwave ablation, you can see a large zone of ablation, 24 hours, three months, six months, and in PET-CT, there's no activity denoting complete ablation. In comparison to hyalur lesions or parahyalur lesions, the incidence of complications is higher, and the tumor response also is not preferred and because of the heat sink effect and this effect due to that deviates the, the heat 
away from the core of the lesion to, to the periphery of, of the circulation. And you can see in this, in this video that the flow of the energy is deviated due to the presence of the blood vessel. It makes cooling effect and does not ensure a complete zone of ablation around the lesion. So what are the complications of this technique, pneumothorax? This is the most common complication. Pulmonary hemorrhage is most serious. I described it in the lung biopsy. Other rare complications like fistula, cavernous formation, they are extremely rare. And you can see the risk factors of pneumothorax, as in this case, COPD is one of the most important factors. The same here, crossing pulmonary fissure, as you can see in this, uh, while traversing the fissure, the air will accumulate immediately, so try to avoid it. The same like um, CT-guided biopsy. Also, while you are putting the needle, avoid to cross the pulmonary vessels and try to go parallel to the vessels in order to avoid transection and induction of hemorrhage. Basal lesions are also associated with hemorrhage, the same principle like the CT-guided uh, biopsy, and avoid the, the uh, long track inside the, the, the lung in order to avoid the incidence of complications. Sometimes we have challenging cases like this. Uh, this is a case of salutary lung post-pneumonectomy, um, and the patient had um, two lesions, and we did the ablation for the two lesions in two separate sessions one for the, um, the lateral part of the middle loop and the other one for the medial part of the middle loop. And, and both lesions, 24 hours post ablation, and the patient was tumor free afterwards, as you can see in, this, in these images. Only there is um, atelectatic bands at the zone of the lesion. Also, sometimes we have, um, this is a lesion, a, a subplural, but also it's uh, near to the uh, aorta, and uh, these are two um, images on CT and also in, in, in association with the MRI. You can see there's no evidence of enhancement and only fibrotic changes and post ablation 18 month, there is no uh, evidence of activity at the ablation zone. So to conclude, ablation therapy of the lung tumors could be utilized as a safe technique and therapeutic tool for the treatment of pulmonary neoplasm. The efficacy of treatment is mainly controlled and determined by the pre-ablation tumor size as well as the location from the, in relation to the hilum. Successful ablation lesions are lesions less than three centimeters in diameter and careful selection of the cases will ensure the outcome of this technique. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Nuruddin. Uh, really comprehensive uh, uh, presentation on um, you know, ablation in general. Just a quick question. Maybe the audience also will give them some chance to ask questions, but uh, what is your thought about cryoablation and the fact that it affects the immune th uh, system, especially with the new era of immune therapies that we have right now? I saw that you focus more on microwave and radio frequency. So give us your thoughts about this. Oh, thank you, uh, dear Dr. Ahmad Kamil. Uh, he's my uh, dear colleague um, and also my, my mentor. Uh, so uh, regarding the cryotherapy, um, it's a new era in the ablation therapy. It has many advantages. The, first, the most important one is that the pain is very less and uh, because of the, its cooling effect will lead to desensitization and there's no sensation. So the recovery is higher. But the most important problem regarding the application of the cryo for the lung ablation is that the probe is big. So the incidence of complications is higher. This is our, regarding our experience. And it also takes more time in comparison to the microwave because you, are, you are apply the probe, you wait for the formation of the ice pole, and then we have to, to, to do the cycles till the, uh, the ablation zone is get. Regarding the um, immune response, this is under research. It's not, also not proved. Because also the, uh, the heat hyperthermic effect, like radio frequency or microwave, the denaturated proteins after coagulation therapy will be absorbed and will induce in the immune response. So it's not only uh, governed by the hypothermic effect, but also may be associated with the hyperthermic effect. And all these subjects are under evaluation and assessment. 
Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you and uh, great presentations. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to move to our next speaker.